We're good? Okay. All right, so let's start with page one. Um, we kind of skipped over this page, but we're going to go back to this page here. Hopefully you got some of yours matched up. All right, parallel lines. Who's got a good definition of parallel lines? What's the, the two major parts that you need to know? They, they're the same distance apart. They never intersect. Two or more lines. You can use any of those things. So a set of lines, so this could be more than one or more than two, um, of lines with the same slope that never intersect. Here's a notation you guys might be new to. Little arrows that go in the same direction on the line mean that they're parallel. So we might have multiple sets of parallel lines and the two little arrows will tell you which ones are parallel. Maybe there's two arrow sets, maybe there's three. It just depends on that. So for everyone it's different, okay? This is not parallel to this. Do you agree? These two are not parallel, but these two are parallel and this is a new set of parallel lines, okay? Equilateral triangle, what would be the key parts of an equilateral triangle? Please raise your hand if you have at least one idea. Yeah, what do you got? The, the angles are the same. The angles are the same. So what would the angles be if they're the same? Is there a certain amount that we know that they have to be? 90. Who said 60 degrees? Why'd you say that? The triangle adds up to 180. Oh, there's something you learned in eighth grade, right? A triangle adds up to be what? 180. 180. What's 180 divided by 3? 60 degrees. So it is a triangle. We usually label these as A, B, and C, where all sides are the same size and all angles are also the same. Because they're all the same and it's a triangle, we know all angles add up to be what? 180. Every angle is 60 degrees in an equilateral triangle. So we usually have that definition as a triangle. with all three sides the same length. What's a word we use for math for that word? When everything's the same, what's that word called? Congruent. So they're congruent, right? Okay, so a triangle with all three sides the same length. We also we call that what? Congruent. So we can put that in there so they have a better idea of that. And and what do you have to also have? All angles are equal, and they happen to be what? Sixty degrees. So we, we write this as triangle A, B, C, if we're going to talk about that triangle. We, that's how we do the notation. So we have labeled all those angles as the same with the little tally. Um, we also can label the side lengths to be all the same, the exact same way. Since I used one dash on the angles, sometimes you'll, you'll see two on these so that it's not as confusing. All the two dashes match, all the one dashes match. You guys see that? Okay, angle bisector. This is a big one. You're going to use this a lot. So, who's got an idea what this one is? Besides the other student that's taking this class. Does it have to be 90 degree angle? Does it have to be 90 degree angle? So, any angle, and what's the line do? Split it. Split it. How? Two equal halves. Two equal halves. So, bisect is the same as, for both of these, is the same as Cutting it in equal parts, two equal parts. If it was tri, what would I do? Trisect would be what? Three, three equal three parts, equal okay? Parts. So think about the beginning of the word. It's bisect, it's two equal parts. So it looks like this. We might have any angle. It doesn't matter what the size of the angle is. We always have arrows on the end because they go on forever. And this angle could have a bisect 
lime. Let's see if I can find another color. Where a line goes through that. And this is called the angle bisector. So what that creates is that this angle now, instead of the whole angle, what part is equal to what part? This side is now equal to this side. So if that whole angle was 60 degrees, let's say that this is 60 degrees, what would each of these be? 30. 30. So the written definition that we would have is an angle bisector. divides the angle into two equal parts. So sometimes the notation on this is um, we might have points on here where we could describe this angle. So let's say this angle is A, B, C. So we would say angle. I always like to put a little line there because if I don't, it looks like a less than sign and that gets kind of confusing. So um, we can say angle A, B, C, um, and maybe we label this as, as line M, okay? So A, B, C is bisected by line M. Now, if I had a point on each side of this line, I could call that, if it was a point M and L, I could say line ML, something like that. So you can describe a line in multiple ways. We can describe the whole thing, and we can try to describe just a segment of it. Questions on angle bisector yet so far? Pretty clear? Makes sense? Okay. So how is this any different than this? Turn and tell your neighbor. Okay, three, two, one, back up here. Thank you for your attention. All right, so what, I have some good conversations over here. What'd you guys say? Someone wanna share? Two lines cross, that's a start. We got two lines, they cross. What else does this tell us? They're perpendicular. They're perpendicular. What's perpendicular mean? Exactly 90 degrees. Exactly 90 degrees. So we can turn this into, what's this little box represent? 90 degrees. That means 90 degrees, okay? So we have a 90 degree angle. So this is a bisect, uh, perpendicular bisector is a line that cuts through a, uh, another line that creates 90 degrees. But it's not just that, it has to bisect something. So it's gotta, it's gotta cut through something and make two equal parts. So are we gonna make two equal parts of the angle or are we doing something else? Of the line segment, okay? So per, if it was an angle, then we would talk about the angle. But that means we need two points out here to create two equal um, line segments. So really this should be perpendicular bisector or line segment bisector is probably what this should be called. Okay, so these points out here, let's call this A and B and let's call the middle C. I guess I could have gone in order, but that's okay. Um, and so what this tells us is that we have a line, let's say this is, this line right here is the perpendicular bisector. And it creates two equal parts in the other line. So we can say two, two lines that intersect. and divide to 
to form 90 degree angle angles I guess there's multiple um, which is also known as what type of an angle right angle. right angles So we can say, if we were going to talk about the notation, we're going to talk about this in a mathematical language, we could say segment AC is the same, so we do a little congruent sign, as segment BC by, um, because of this line, we'll call that L this time, because of line L is a perpendicular bisector. Oh, that's cut off, isn't it? Okay, line segment. I'm sure you guys all could figure this one out. What is it? Uh-oh. You asleep? It has two points and it has a line uh, connecting it. When you were a little kid and you played dot to dot, what is what were you creating? Line segments. That's it. So if you have two dots, two points, a line that is enclosed in those or that connects those, um, and it's just a piece of a full line. So a full line goes on and on forever, and a line segment is a piece of that. So a line between two points. So if we said, um, you know, A, B, and we would label that with a little bar above it, saying that it's a line segment. If we wanted to say it was just a line, we would put little arrows on the end of that line, on that notation. All right, questions on that one so far? How many of you feel pretty good about those five vocab words? All right, and we're gonna add about 45 more. All right? <laughs> Yay! Okay, so you were able to put in yours, um, most of yours. You probably would have been able to put in quite a few of your vocabulary words already. So we're just gonna go through each of these. I already have them filled in. You're gonna just correct yours if you have them wrong, or if you have them right. So we'll discuss these. If at any time, you don't know these, you need to raise your hand and ask a question about what it is or why, why it's different than another vocab, okay? So this one's easy, a point, a precise location or a place on a plane usually represented by a dot. We label them like this, so E, C, A, B, D, any letter you wanna label it, that's what it looks like. Um, it's really important that you learn how to label your pictures, so if you don't have these labels, you need to try to write those in as well. So if you don't have the same picture, you might want to draw in the picture that I have. Okay? What's the next one? Line. A line. You figure that out. We could label this as line L or M or N. Usually, I don't know why those are the letters that we use, but we use L, M, and N to label lines a lot. What's next? Line segment. Line segment. So a piece of that line, if we put points on that line, we have a geometric object that is straight, infinitely thin, and has two distinct endpoints. So that's the difference between these two. They could be labeled with any letters. A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z. Okay, what's next? Midpoint. 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 Okay, midpoint's a big one. You're going to use this one a lot. <coughs> it's a point on the line segment that divides it, it into two equal parts. The halfway point of a line segment. So if I have A to B, M is here, it tells you that this piece is the same as this piece. So M is the midpoint. So do we have a midpoint on this last thing that we did with the perpendicular bisector? Where's the midpoint? Which one's the midpoint? C. C. So technically we had a midpoint there. Um, and we drew a straight line through that midpoint to get there. What's the last one on this page? Array. Array. Not someone's name, but what does array do differently than a line? It has one endpoint and goes on. Portion of the line that starts at one point and it goes in a direction forever and ever, or always, you know, infinitely and beyond, okay? So, starts at a point somewhere and goes on and on forever, 
So anytime you see an arrow, you can always imagine extending this on and connecting it with whatever else you have as a picture. Questions on those five? Good? Okay. Next. Okay, what's the next one? Probably vertex. Socks. Vertex. What's a vertex? It's like a vortex? Oh, you guys are boring reading the definition. <laughs> All right, so vertex. It's the corner of an angle. So if we're looking at an angle, that's the corner. So your picture, V would be the vertex. It's the corner that we're talking about. So if there's a point there, that's what it's called. Common endpoint of, of two or more rays or line segments. So it doesn't matter what it could be. We could have segments there. What's next? Angle. A shape formed by two lines or rays diverging from a common point. So when we talk about an angle, how do we measure them? Degrees. Degrees. So what's the biggest angle you could have? Can you really have a 360 degree angle? But then would it be an angle? So 180 becomes a what? A straight line. So you probably any angle past that, you know. So think of it that way. Think of it outside the box a little bit. What's next? A right angle. Angle whose measures 90 degrees. You guys know that? We represent that with a little box right here. So anytime you see a little box, you know it's 90 degrees. Good? Angle what? We talked about that one. We talked about it. Why? Why do you think we talked about that one first? We're going to use it a lot. Okay, what's next? You might want to add on here that all angles are always 60 degrees. Okay, questions on that one? What's the triangle that has two of its equal in length? Two sides equal in length. Isosceles. So when you're labeling an isosceles triangle, you have two angles that are what? Same. The same. And how do you know which two sides are the same? <laughs> you just look at it and you decide if this looks right, so then it's it's gonna be good? Not quite. You cannot assume anything in geometry. Assuming is bad. So no matter what the picture looks like, you gotta go off of what the notation is. So turn and ask your neighbor. How do we know which sides are the two that are the same? Go. You guys got an answer? So they have the same angles. Okay, so what if I drew a triangle like this? And I said this angle is the same as this angle. So, um, and I'm going to label these A, B, and C on the sides. So which two sides are the same? B and C. How do you know it's B and C and not A? They all look the same to me. Uh, because, because of the way we're drawing. The angles are congruent. Because you said they're the same. Angles are congruent. I said they're the same. I didn't. I didn't tell you which ones are the same. I told you the angles are the same. Did I tell you anything about the lines? No, you can't tell because it doesn't have the line lines. There's no little line thing going through it? But the definition of an isosceles triangle says what? There's two angles that are, um, two of its sides are equal in length. Therefore, these angles are equal as well. So the, ang ang the sides opposite of the angle are the ones that are going to be equal. So which one's going to be equal here? This one and what? This one, because they make that angle. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so tomorrow, what are you doing? Looking up the rest of your things with an iPad, okay? All right. Have a good day. No, we don't have to do that yet. Bye, have a good one. We have we have homework? Nope, not yet. We didn't finish the lesson, so you're getting away.